Scions of the ancient Cadmian line. What is the meaning of this thronging round my feet, this holding out of olive boughs all wreathed in wool? The city droops with elegiac sound and hymns with palls of incense. Hang. I come to see it. With my eyes, no messengers. Yes, I whom men call Oedipus the Great. Speak, Elder. You are senior here. Say what this pleading means. What frightens you? What you beseech? King Oedipus, the sovereign of my land. You see here, young and old, clustered round the shrine. Fledgling some is saying flight, and some much weighted down as I by age, the presbyter of Zeus, and stripling some ambassadors of youth. Yes, see the storm that batters down this city's prow in waves of blood. The crops diseased, disease among the herds, the ineffectual womb rotting with its fruit. A fever demon wastes the town and decimates with fire. Stalking hated through the emptied house where Cadmus lived. While poverty-stricken night grows fat on groans and elegies in Hades' realms. So, you most respected king, we plead with you to find for us a cure. You must not let your reign go down as one when men were resurrected once and once relapsed. Mend the city. Make her safe. You had good omens once. You did your work. Be equal to your stature now. If king of men, as king you are, then be it of a kingdom manned and not a desert. Your news, poor earnest children, is not new to me. I know it. Well, you all are sick, yet sick, not one so sick as I. Your pain is single, each to each, it does not breathe. Mine is treble anguish.
crying out for the city, for myself, for you. It was no man asleep you woke. Ah, no. But one in bitter tears. And one perplexed in thought, found wandering, who clutched the only remedy that came to send the son of Menoikius, Creon, my own Neocastor's brother, to the place Apollo haunts at Pythia, to learn what act or covenant of mine could still redeem the state. I count the days. His time is up. He does not come. He should be here. But when he comes, the instant he arrives, whatsoever he shall tell me from the God, that I must follow to the end, or I am damned. Royal brother. What news? What mandate, son of Monarchus, from the mouth of the God? Favorable. I'd even say our wounds, Apollo's bidding done, will issue into blessings. Which means? You leave me half in hope, half buried in despair. Will you hear it publicly? I'm ready. Mm. Shall we go inside? Speak out to all. It's much more theirs than mine, or more my own than my own soul. Very well, then. Here is what the God has said. The Prince Apollo openly enjoins on us to sever from the body politic a monstrous growth that battens there. Stop feeding that which festers. Uh, by what treatment? How applied? By banishment. Or death for death. The city frets with someone's blood. Who? Is the unhappy man not named? Laius, sir. The man who was king in days before you ruled. A man I never saw. A murdered man. And now, clearly is required the just blood of his assassins. But where on this earth are they? Where does one begin? to search the long-lost traces of forgotten crime. Here, yeah, says the God. Seek, and you shall find. Only that escapes, which never was pursued. Elias meet his violent death. He planned a pilgrimage, he said, and so left home, never to return again. He went alone, no companions, no witnesses who could furnish a report. Dead. All dead but one who fled in panic. And he tongue-tied save on a single point. What point? Tell it! Clues breed clues, and we must snatch at straws. This man insists that highwaymen attacked the king. Not one, but many. And they cut him down. Highwaymen? No highwaymen would be so bold. Unless... someone here tempted him with bribes. So we thought. But with Laius gone, we were sunk in miseries and no one stirred. 
His death went unavenged. What miseries could ever let you leave unsolved the death and downfall of a king? Sir, it was the siren sphinx of riddles who sang us from the shadowed past to what was sorely present. Then I'll go back and drag that shadowed past to light again, a search which you and I together will pursue. My designs could not be suited more to avenge my God and country at one stroke. Ah, not from any far-flung friend, but by myself and for myself, I'll break this play. Well, who knows? Tomorrow, the self-same murderer may turn his bloody hands on me. The cause of Laius, therefore, is my own. So, rise up, children. Hurry! Go! Summon all thieves! I am resolute. With Apollo's help, we shall not fail, but will all blessedly emerge. What god golden voice from the gold studded shrine of the Pytho comes to our glorious Thebes? My spirit is tremulous, racked with its eagerness. Help! Hela of Delos, Pian, I'm fainting with fear of what fate you will fashion me now, or turn in the turning of time. Speak to me, Oracle. Child everlastingly sprung from hope so goldenly. Come! I call on you first. God's daughter, immortal Athena. Then on your sister, Earth's guardian. Artemis, ringed round with praises and throned in our square. Ah, and far-shooting Phoebus. You three that are champions, swift to deliver, appear. For if ever the fire of disaster reared on the city, you beat its affliction away. Then come. Make yourselves ready today. Soul after soul, like fire, beats. Beats upward, soaring to the god of the setting sun. Shriveled soil and shrinking wombs in childbirth shrieking. A decimated city dying and deadly the dead, all lying uncried for. But crying matrons and mothers graying at every altar Praying, till the chiming sorrow of dirges is splintered by shouts of the paean Rescue! O oh, golden daughter of Zeus, with your smile. Muffle the wildfire Mars, warring with copper-hot fever. Whirl him back homeward and headlong. Plunge him down from our shores. For oh, what night has spared us. He does at break of day. Sun golden champion, Apollo. Let us sing the song of your arrows, shot from the bow of the sun, while Artemis, blazing with torches, courses the Lycian mountains. And you, O Theban Bacchus, wine blush. And thick crown. Come, O torch. Come, wheeling with your menads. You're praying. Then listen. What you pray for, you can have. If you'll hear my plan. A plan to stop the plague. I speak, of course, as stranger to the story and stranger to the crime. Helpless, therefore, to track it down unless you give me clues. But since I am your latest citizen, speaking among citizens, I dare to challenge all you Thebans with the following. Does any man among you know? 
who killed Laius, son of Labdacus. Son of Labdacus. Such a one I now command to tell me everything. To tell me everything. If self-incrimination keeps him silent, let him be assured he need fear nothing worse than banishment. And is any man aware the murder was committed by someone from another land? Let him not be shy to say it. To say it. What? Silent still. If anyone is out to shield a guilty friend, or is it guilty self, he would best listen to the penalties I plan. That man, whoever that man be, I, this country's reigning king, cut off from every fellowship of speech and contact, sacrifice and sacrament, even ritual touch of water in this realm. Thrust out from every home, he'll be the very picture of that pestilence God's oracle at Pythia has just revealed to me. Yes, such an ally, nothing less, am I of both religion and the murdered man. As to the killer, who has slipped away, be he one or many men, I now call down a life to fit a life dragged out in degradation. And even if I myself should prove myself to harbor him at home, then on myself I call down all the curses I have just invoked. For the God Apollo, for this land, so fruitless now and so cast off by heaven, for even without the gods' express command, how could you find it in you to neglect a monarch's death and not pursue this ending to the best of men whose very scepter I hold in my hands as king? His marriage bed, my bed of seed. Our children. I shall not rest till I have traced the hand that slew the son of Labdacus, the son of Polydorus, heir to Cadmus in the line of ancient. And those who disobey, I'll ask the gods to curse, let them waste and burn away as in this present plague. The rest of you, my loyal men of Thebes, who think with me, may justice and the whole of heaven Help. Sire, the oath you offer me, I gladly take. I swear I am not the killer, nor can I tell you who the killer is. Apollo posed the problem. Let Apollo point the culprit out. Most sir. But who can force the hand of heaven? The next best thing, if I may say. Next best, third best, say it, anything. There lives a man who, with a king's eye, sees the secrets of a king. Tiresias of Apollo. He is our source. Our chance of learning, sire. No, do not think that I've been idle there. Twice I have sent for him at Creon's bidding. I cannot understand what keeps him so. We can dismiss those haunting rumors now. Rumors? I must hear them all. How he met his death through traveling vagabonds. Yes, I've heard that too. We have no witnesses, however. And he'd be a brazen man indeed, stunned nerved by all your menaces. Mere words will not stay one who murder never could. And yet, there is a man who could reveal the criminal. Come, great mystic Tiresias. Intuitive, didactic master of the finite and the infinite. You cannot see it. You must surely feel the overwhelming weight of all this city's walls. You are our last refuge, prophet, and our help. 
The god Apollo has sent an answer to us saying, no deliverance from the plague unless you seek and find the liars killers and punish such with death or banishment. Now, sir, do not begrudge the smallest hint your skill from birds or any other omen can elicit. Save yourself, the city, and save me. Save us from this whole corruption of the dead. We're in your hands. Anguish to be wise when wisdom is a loss. Oh, send me home. Take up your load. It's no loyal answer. Refuse to speak. We ask you, all of us, do not deny us what you know. All ignorant. No, I refuse to link my wisdom with a downfall such as yours. What you know and will not say? You'd rather sacrifice us all and let the city rot? I'd rather save us both from pain. You miserable old man, you fire a stone to fury. Still refuse your flinty heart set in hopeless stubbornness? Your flinty heart. If you could see what lurks in yours. Hear that? What man alive, I ask, could stand such insults to our sovereignty and state? It will all out in time. Out in time? Then why not say it now? I've said enough. Your hand, boy. You! You planned this thing! And I suspect you of the very murder, even. And if you had your eyes, I'd say that you yourself had done the deed. Would you so? Then I shall charge you to abide with that same curse you hurl at me. You dare to think you're safe? The truth has made me strong. What truth? You force it out of me. That you and your most dearly loved are wrapped together in a hideous sin. <laughs> you, Oedipus, you yourself, murdered the man whose murderer you seek. You can't hurt me, you night-hatched thing. Not me or any man who lives in light. I'm not the one fate casts for your fall. Apollo is enough. Creon. Was it you or he who thought of that? Creon? I am not Creon's myrmidon. I serve the god Apollo. So this is what he wants. Creon, the loyal. Creon, so long, my friend. Stealing up to overthrow and snatch. Suborning sorcerers, this hawking conjurer, a genius born blind with eyes for gain. Yes, you! Tell me when you ever played the prophet straight. Or why, when the she-dog Sphinx of Riddle sang, you never spoke a thing to break the spell. But I, the Oedipus, who stumbled here, could snuff her out with human wit, not taking cues from birds. And I'm the one you want to topple down to give yourself a place by Creon's throne. Ah, uh, do not be surprised if exorcism turns and exorcises you and him. For were you not as doting as you seem, I'd lash you with the lessons of your fraud. Forgive us, Oedipus, but this is anger. He spoke in anger too, and both beside the point. What we want to know is how to carry out the gods' designs. Blind. He mocks at me for that. What keeps you here? Go! Go to your damnation. Blind. You see and still are blind. Appallingly. Blind to your origins. Blind to a union in your house. You do not guess what hate is dormant there, or buried with your dear ones dead, 
or how a mother's and a father's curse shall scourge you with its double thongs and whip you staggering from the land. First ask from whence you came and then call down abuses and everything that I and Creon say. No man alive shall see his life so ground away. I never thought to listen to such ranted folly. The parents you were born from thought me wise. Parents? Wait! Who were my parents? This single day shall furnish you a birthday and a death. I tell you this. The man you seek for for the murder of King Laius. That man, I say, is here. A stranger, it was thought. A stranger. Soon you shall see him openly displayed, a Theban born and shattered by the honor. Blind instead of seeing. A beggar, he who once was rich, banished to distant lands with a stick. Oh, yes, detected in his very heart of home, his children's father and their brother, son and husband of his mother. Dead rival to his father. And assassin. Ponder this. And go inside. And when you think you've caught me in a lie, then come and tell me I'm not fit to prophesy. Speaking stone from Delphi, damned. Whose hands in Carnadin achieved the master stroke of master murdering. Faster than horses that beat on the wind, he must fly. The son of Zeus, caparisoned in light, and fire is on his heel. Apollo to the hunt will run the man to earth through savage woods and stony caverns. A lone wounded bull he limps, lost and alone. The seer's divining. I cannot assent. I cannot deny. Deserted by words. I hover on hopes. All blind for today and blind for tomorrow. Zeus and Apollo are wise and discern the conditions of man. But, oh, among men, where is there proof that a prophet can know more than me? Wisdom can surpass wisdom in a man. But nevertheless, I'll not be quick to judge before the proof. For once the winged and female sphinx challenged him and found him sage and a friend of the city. So never in my mind, at least, shall he be guilty of crime. Good citizens, I hurry here, shocked into your presence by a monstrous charge laid on me by Oedipus the king. If he thinks, in all this turmoil of our times, that any word or act of mine was ever done in malice, done to harm, I'd rather end my life than live so wronged. For this is not a trifling calumny, but full catastrophe 
to find myself called traitor. Traitor to my town, to you, and to my friends. We are convinced the taunt was made in anger, not coolly uttered by a mind at calm. It was uttered then. Said that I have got the seer to tell a tale of lies. It was, sir. We cannot fathom why. But said with steady eyes, steady mind, this onslaught made against my name? I do not know. What my master does, I do not see. What? You again? You dare come back! Have the face to put your foot inside my door. You, the murderer, self-proved, the self-condemned filcher of my throne. In heaven's name, what cowardice or lunacy did you detect in me to give you courage for it? Did you think that I would never spot such treachery? Or that when I did, I'd not be one to fight? What madman's game is this to go out hunting thrones without a following or friends? When thrones are only one with much support or bought? Please, let me speak too. And when you've heard me, judge. Well, you're too good at talking and I'm too slow at hearing words so full of poisonous intent. That's precisely what I would dispute. Your innocence, I take it. Precisely what I will not hear. You're very much mistaken, sir, if you think this stubbornness is needful. And you, sir, have made a grave mistake to think that hurting relatives can do no harm. How have I hurt you? Did you or did you not urge me to send for that reverend, benighted seer? I did. And still I think that I did right. Tell me, how long is it since Laius? Laius what? Disappeared. Died. Old calendars, long past, would tell us that. And was this prophet in his practice then? He was, and just as wise, just as honored. Did he at any time then speak of me? No, at least never in my hearing. And you did nothing to investigate the death of Laius? A full inquiry, and nothing learned. Why did the all-seeing seer not tell his story then? <laughs> that I cannot answer for and shall not venture an opinion. I cannot answer that. I do not know. Oh, you could answer very well, at least upon one point. What point is that? If I know, I shall declare it. Just this. The prophet fixed on me the death of Laius, precisely at your prompting. What prompted him? Only you can tell. Now, I should like to ask some questions, too, and you can do the answering. Ask away. You will not find a murderer. Well, then. Are you married to my sister? I am. Why should I deny it? And reign equally with her over all the realm? Yes, I do my best to carry out her wishes. And of this unit, do I make an equal third? Exactly. Which is why you make so false a friend. No. Try to reason it as I must reason it. First, ask yourself, who would choose the troubles of a crowd with no repose and peace when he could have that self-same power without? I would not covet kingship for itself when I can be a king by other means. Who would? Who knows what wisdom is? All my ambitions now are satisfied through you without anxiety, but once a king, all hedged in by constraint. I'm not so simple as to grasp the symbols of sovereignty and power when I can have the sweet reality without. To enjoy the fact, untrammeled by the image, surely is pure game. Now, smiled upon by all, why should I let this go, this ease? and reach for cares. Test me. Go to Delphi. Ask if I have brought back lies for prophecies. And do not stop. But if you find me plotting with a fortune teller, take me. Kill me. Full indicted on a double, not a single count. Not yours alone, but mine. No justice brands the good and justifies the bad. Drive friendship out, I say, and you drive out life itself. One sweetest friend. No. Time will teach you well. The honest man needs time. The sinner, but a single day to bear his crimes. 
He speaks well, sir. The circumspect should care. Swift thinking never makes sure thought. Swift thinking must step in to parry where swift treachery steps into plot. Must I hold my peace until his perfect plans are more than match for mine? Then what is it you want? My banishment? Banishments? Yes, that. Though I would rather see you dead. So adamant. So full of disbelief. Only a fool could put his trust in you. And you think you are wise. Wise for myself, at least. Then why not for me as well? What, for a born traitor? Princess, what if you are wrong? Wrong, perhaps, but reigning still. It's reigning fool. Your caster, the queen. Please. My own poor thieves. My city, too! You must compose your... Sirs! Oh. Sirs, you most misguided man. Shame on your shouting at each other. How can you wrangle over private wrongs with thieves our city in her agony? Come back home, sir, you, and creon you into your house. Stop turning petty grievances into public scandal. Grievances, my sister? Oedipus, your husband, means to do me devilish harm with choice of dooms. Exile from my father's land or death. Yes, my wife, I've caught him, plotting against my very person. May the gods curse me! If I be guilty in the smallest part of what you charge. In the gods' name, listen, Oedipus, listen! He's made an oath to heaven for me and for us all. Believe a king. Believe. Be willing to be wise. Believe. What? You'd have me yield? He never told you lies before. He swore. Be kind. Do you know for what you plead? We know. Explain. Do not impeach a friend or lead him to disgrace. Yes. How you hate. Even in your yielding. But passion spent. Remorse will follow. Madam, why delay to lead him out? I stay to know. Hot and hasty words, suspicion and dismay. From both? From both. What words? Sire, I've said it more than once, how insensate we'd be, what crass and total fools to abdicate from you. Who set this foundering ship, this suffering realm, back on her course, and now again can take the helm. the God's name. Oedipus, inform me too what in the world has worked you to this rage. It's Creon! He has played me false. What's the charge? Tell me clearly. What's the quarrel? <laughs> he makes me murderer of liars. <laughs> His own invention? Or on evidence? Ah, the fox! He sends along a mouthing seer and keeps his own lips safe and pure. Oh, then. All together put behind those cares and be persuaded and consoled. There is no art of foreseeing known to men. I have my proof. Yes. Once, long ago, there came to Laius from, let us not suppose Apollo personally, but from his ministers, an oracle which said that fate would make him meet his end through a son son of his and mine. Well, there was a murder, yes. But done by marauding vagabonds, they say, where three highways meet. And then the son, not three days old, is left by Laius. So there, Apollo fails to make the son his father's murderer and fails to make the father. Laius, sick with dread, murdered by his son. All foreseen by fate and seers, of course, and all to be forgotten. If the God would have the future told, then let the God himself divine it. My queen! Each word that strikes my ear has struck a piece. What pale memory passes now? Liars was killed. I thought I caught the words where three highways meet. So they said. That is how the story goes. 
The accident? Where did it happen? At a land called Focus. At a place where the road from Delphi meets the road from Dauli. The time? How many years ago? A little before you came to power here, the news was made public in the town. Oh, Zeus, what plaything will you make of me? Why, Oedipus, what nightmare thought has struck you? Do not ask! No, yes. Laius. Tell me his age, his height. Was he in the prime of life? Tall. The first soft bloom of silver in his hair. In form, not far removed from yours. Oh, lost, yes, sure, lost. What, my king? I'm afraid. I'm afraid the eyeless seer has seen. But wait, one thing more. Yes? It frightens me, but ask. I try to tell. Did he set out in simple state or with a bodyguard as king? Five men in all and one a herald. A single chariot for the king. It's all too clear. But who brought back this report to you? A servant. The only man who got away. Is he in this house? By chance. For when he got back and saw you reigning in dead Laius' place, he begged me, pressed my hand, to send him to the country far from sight of Thebes where he could lead a shepherd's life. And so I sent him. But could we have him here without delay? Certainly. But what should make you ask? There may be things, my wife, that I have said, best left unsaid, which makes me want him here. He shall be here. But tell me, Oedipus, may I not also know what frightens you? Oh, you shall. For I have passed into such territory, so fear such threatenings of fate. I welcome you, my truest. My father was Corinthian, Polybus. My mother, Dorian, called Merope. I was the city's foremost man until a certain incident befell, a curious incident. Once, a drunkard, in his cups, cried out that I was not my father's son. And all that day, I fretted, hardly able to contain my hurt. But on the next, I went immediately to ask my mother and my father, and yet, this thing had hatched a scruple in my mind, so deep, it made me steal away from home to Delphi, to the Oracle. And there, Apollo, never hinting at what I came to hear, sent me home again. With ears ringing with some other things he uttered, prophecies of horrible, disgusting, things, how mating with my mother then to be my very father's murderer. Oh, I fled from there. As I reached this triple parting of the way, a herald and a man, like you described, in a coat-drawn chariot, came, the leading groom, the old man urging him, tried to force me off the road. The groom jostled me and I, enraged, landed him a blow, which when the old man sees, waits till I'm abreast, then from his chariot, cracks a double-pointed goat pulled down upon my head. 
Be more than paid for that. For in a triceless hand of mine, I felled him with a stick and rolled him from his chariot stand. I killed him. Oh, 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 I killed them all. Now, if Lyos is this unknown man, there's no one in the world so doomed as I. No one born. I can't go home. Or I will make my mother wife, my father dead. My lord. Hmm? Wait until you hear the witness speak. Have hope. Yes. All my hope upon a herdsman now. Oh, purity of deed and sweet intent. Enshrine me in your grace. Pride. Banqueting on vanities. Mistaken and mistimed. State, I have a new design. With these garlands and with incense in my hands to call it all the shrines. For rampant fancies in a legion raid the mind of Oedipus. I address myself to you, Apollo. That you may work some way to make us clean. Can you tell me, please? Good sir, is this the palace of King Oedipus? This is his palace, sir, and he's within. This lady is his wife and mother of his children. <laughs> Heaven bless her always. And bless hers. The perfect wife, blessed perfectly with him. And you, sir, too. Be blessed for your remark. But are you here to ask us news or give? To give it, madam. Happy news. Both for your house and husband. Happy news? From where? From Corinth. What's bittersweet? Ready, so they hope, to mount the throne. How so? The old man Polybus still reigns. No more. For death has sealed him in his grave. What? Is Oedipus' father dead? Yes, dead. It's true. On my life, he's dead. Quick, girl! Off and tell your master this. <laughs> he's dead. <laughs> Just listen to this man and fill your ears. Who is this? What has he come to say? A man from Corinth. Come to see your father is no more. Old Polybus. He's dead. What's that? Explain yourself, good sir. To give you first things first, he's gone. Be quite assured he's dead. By treason or disease? A little touch will tip the old to sleep. He died a natural death, then. Poor old man. Well, now I am done with delving into Pythian oracles which foretold that I should kill my father. Well? He's dead. And may he rest in peace. With all those prophecies. Worth nothing, as I told you even then. You told me, yes, but I was sick with fear. Were it not my mother still alive? She is, so all your comfort cannot quieten me. I fear a woman. A woman, sir? Whoever could she be? Merope, old man, who lived with Polybus. 
Master, what's in her that she could frighten you? There's been a warning, a warning sent from heaven. Can it be told? Or must it not be her? No. Apollo once declared that I should come to couple with my mother. And with these hands of mine, spill out the lifeblood of my father. Is this the fear that drove you out of Corinth? Yes, old man, not to be my father's murderer. Then why do I wait? I can unlock the worries of a king. Oh, if you could, I'd heap you with rewards. Well, you fled from home because of this. Yes, the fear of Apollo may be proven right. Polybus and you were worlds apart. Worlds apart? He was my father, was he not? No more, no less than I. I tell you this. No more, no less than you. And nothing, then? He never gave you life. No more than I. Then whatever made him call me son? You were a gift. He took you from my arms. Could he love me so, and I not his? He had no children of his own to love. On those hills, I used to tend my flocks. A wandering shepherd, then? Yes, and on that day, your saviour too, my son. But did you find me in great misery or pain? The ankles of your feet should tell you that. that. Ancient hurt. Why remind me of it? I loosed your feet, both riveted together. My mother's doing, or my father's? For the God's sake, say. I do not know. The man who gave you me could tell you that. Not found by me, but... Handed over by another shepherd. What shepherd? Would you know him still? He was known as one of Laius' men. Well, could I see him? Is he still alive? Your own people here could tell you best. Does any man here present know this herdsman he is talking of? Either seen him in the fields or hereabouts? I think he means that herdsman, sire, you asked to see before. Yocaster here is surest judge of that. Madam? Do you know this man we sent for once before? Is he the one he means? Who? What matters who he means? Why ask? It's not worth knowing now. Forget it all. Forget it all. I, I can't. I can't stop now. For the God's sake, don't go on for your own life's sake. And I've been tortured long enough. If be persuaded, please do not proceed. Persuaded from the truth, I must go on. Now I am pleading for your happiness. The secrets of my birth, the clues all in my hand. May the gods help you, Oedipus, and hide from you who you are. Goodbye, my poor deluded, lost and damned. There's nothing else that I can call you now. Oedipus, the queen has left in muted grief. A silence comes before a storm, then let it burst! Oh, I am prove it born of nothing. Let me find that nothing out. Oh, I'm a child of chance. Laius. Look! I'd say, although I'd never met the man, that there's the herdsman we've been searching for. Yes. We know him well. First question then to you, Corinthian. Is he the man you mean? Come here, sir. Look. 
Look into my eyes. Tell me straight, were you one of Lias' men? Yes, sir. And you've run across this man before. Did you never meet him? Not to remember, sir. I couldn't rightly say. Let me jog his memory. And when at last the winter came, we both drove off our flocks. I to my sheep cots. He back to Lyos' fold. Am I right? Or am I wrong? Aye, you're right. Can you recall a baby boy you gave me once? What are you getting at? What are these questions for? Take a look, my friend. He's standing there. Your baby boy. Great master, please. You refuse to answer this man's question about the boy. The child that he's been speaking of. Did you give it him or not? I did. I did. I wish I'd died that day. You'll die today unless you speak the truth. Don't ask me anymore. If I have to ask again, you'll die. Then from Lias' house. That's where it's from. They say... It was his own, but the Queen herself could probably explain. She... She gave it to you. That'd been a holy warning. What kind of warning? That he would kill his parents. In heaven's name, what made you pass him on to that old man? Only pity, sir. generations of man. His life is vanity and nothingness. friend 
still friend and by my side. He takes your place as sole custodian of the state. Ah. Oh. Children. Antigone, it's Mainly, where are you? Harry! Oh. <laughs> Children. You are no longer master now. 